Hello everybody. Today we're going to continue our fog series and we're going to install fog on a fresh Debian install. So let's jump into it. Okay, so we're at the fog project website, fogproject.org. We'll go to download. And so you want to find the zip file or the tar G zip file. And you're going to copy link. We're going to go over to our server. Take a look at what we've got in our directory. We're going to make a downloads directory. And we're going to use wget to grab that file. So it's github.com slash fog project slash fog project slash archive slash 1.5.10.tar.gz. It will download the file. Clear our screen. tar-zxvf. 1.5.10.tar.gz Okay, so as you can see we've got our fog project 1.5.10 We are going to change into the directory fog project 1.5.10 and we need to be in the bin directory and we've got an install file so we're going to change the root user which again, you should know that you only do this in certain circumstances. But if we do that, it knocks us back to a different directory, as we can see. So we need to go to home, downloads, and back to our bin directory. And now we can just say dot slash install fog. First question, what version of Linux would you like to run the installer for? And it has the default choice of two. It is a Debian system. So we're going to just hit enter to accept that version, that option. What type of installation would you like? Normal, just hit enter. Would you like to change the default network interface? For our purposes, no, we do not want to do that. Would you like to set up a router address for the DHCP server? Yes. And that is in fact my router address. Would you like DHCP to handle DNS? Yes, in our case. What DNS address should DHCP allow? And it has our router address, which is fine. Would you like to use fog for DHCP service? So I'm going to preface this. We're going to say no. However, there are instances where you may want to say yes, and you need to refer to the documentation for further information on this. If you, for example, have a situation where you need to handle both BIOS and UEFI imaging, and you don't want to keep switching the name of the boot image on the server, you may want to say yes for this. However, for this demonstration, we're going to say no. Has internationalization support? No, we don't want to add additional language packs. Uh, we're not going to enable HTTPS at this point. And it asks about changing the host name. We're not going to change that either. Do you want to send information back to the FOG developers? We're going to say no to this. And it reviews 
information with you. Now, two things you want to take and note is option 66 and 67. Option 66 is next server. This is the IP address that you will put in your DHCP server, whether that be your router or firewall or a Windows server or what have you. These are the two options you need to set. Now, option 67 is the boot file. If you're doing BIOS, then you would do undionly.kkpxe. If you're doing EFI, you would do snponly.efi. All right, at this point, we can say yes to continue. And it's going to start installing packages for us. This is the part that may take a few minutes to get through. Of course, this is going to be determined by the speed of your internet connection and the hardware you are running fog on. So I'll wait just a few minutes and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. We've got to the first stopping point. We need to copy this URL. Go to our web browser. And basically all we're doing here is clicking the button, install update now. This handles the database creation. That's going to keep track of images and devices and whatnot in the fog system. All right, install update successful. We come back here and we hit enter. Again, this IP address is one we will want to take note of. All right, so if we jump back to our fog web interface. The default user is fog and the default password is password. And of course you would want to change this when you get logged into your system. And we'll make that just a little smaller so it all fits on, all the icons fit on one line there. And we've got our basic fog server installed. Now, in order to make Pixie Boot work, we have to come over to our router or firewall. In this case, I am using Unify. Get logged in. Come to the gear, networks, and we want to come down to DHCP service management, show options. Okay. And the option we want is right here under DHCP network boot. You've got to make sure it's enabled. Server is where we put in the IP address. So it's going to be 72 in this case. And I think there's supposed to be two Ks there. Uh, UNDI only dot KKPXE. Apply changes. And we've got an installed fog server. So if we come over here, we can look through users. And the first thing we really want to do is create a new user. And we're going to create that. And list all users. We've got the fog user and my user. So we can use either one going forward. Of course, if you wanted to just change the password for the fog user, you can go and change the password. And you could also delete the user. So something to keep in mind. 
for hosts, we're not going to have anything listed. So just for the sake of complete completeness, even though I've covered this in a previous video and I'll link that in the top corner, we can go over to our Proxmox and we are just going to run through the registration of a machine for imaging. Using Proxmox, when you start up the machine, if you're using a BIOS, you hit escape, it'll give you the boot menu equivalent to hitting F12 if you're using a Dell machine. We choose from the list. One is Pixie Boot and it is booting over the network. We're going to do a full registration on this and in just a moment. Here we go. Cali 2022. And it wants you to associate an image. So we'll jump back over to the new fog machine and we will create a new image. Create new image. We're just going to call this Cali 2022. And this is going to be Linux. And we're going to say add. So if we come back to Proxmox, hit the question mark to list images. And there's only one image, so it's number one. The rest of this, most of it, we're going to enter. Just hit enter for the defaults. No, 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 no. And we're not going to deploy an image and it's going to go through and capture information about the computer. And I'm just going to be ready to stop this. Because all we want to do at this point is just see that we have in fact got a host listed in fog registered in the system. Capture the MAC address and other information. Now, the one thing that I see that it's doing that's kind of interesting is even though we selected Linux, it is showing the Windows icon. So I'm not sure if that's a bug with the new version. Again, something that uh, we can look at in future videos potentially. At this point, we've done what we set out to do today. We've installed Fog on Debian. We have registered a machine in Fog. And at this point, we should have a working system. In future videos, we'll get into more information and we'll look at other options like the quick registration. We'll look at potentially doing some image capture and image deployment on both BIOS and UEFI systems. And as we go through this series of videos, I will try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. Now, I do want to point out, I am not the programmer of FOG. I am not affiliated with the programmers of FOG in any way. If there's something that I don't know, I am going to point you at their documentation. So you're going to have to meet me part way and do some of your own due diligence on testing in your particular environment. I cannot simulate everybody's environment. So on that note, what do you want to see next in fog? I'm happy to try to push down new avenues and test out new things. Uh, but there are limitations to what my environment will support. And there may be things that I just cannot demonstrate for you. So if you got something out of this, take a moment, leave some comments, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're not already. 
only less than 10% of my viewers are subscribed. It would help the channel out and keep me making videos if you get subscribed to the channel. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.